Hello. Thank you for stumbling upon this video. Um, my name's Kyle, and this is another episode of my Retro Tat, where we basically take a look at the various bits of homeware from the mid-century that I've accumulated and uh, just enjoy them. Um, this is more about the appreciation of the thing that's on the camera than it is about tech specs and history. Uh, because that's not how it would have been thought of at the time. It would have been just first impressions of the product when you bought it. And we've got something that I really love. This is one of my prized possessions today from my favourite company in the world, Pefco. Already the weightiness of it, I'm really looking forward to opening this. Um, <clears throat> normally I have this on display out of the case, but I put it back together and it's like opening it again for the first time. This is a Pefco Prince. Um, so the jury's out on which part of the fifties this is from, but it's definitely from the fifties. I have the other famous Pifco prints from the time, um, which I'll do in another video. And that one is apparently from between 1950 and 1955. This one, however, I cannot find any information on a specific date. So I apologize for that. It's an electric shaver. Just a run-of-the-mill electric shaver. But how beautifully executed. I mean, you're lucky if you get a canvas slipcase with an electric shaver nowadays. This comes in its own beautiful cream. This is, is textured. This isn't made to look like some nice quality diamond stitch. It is a nice quality diamond stitch. It's soft. I don't want to go mental on it, obviously, because I'll split it. It is 60-something years old. Even this emblem, you can just make out because it is unfortunately coming away. Like a lot of my items, it's sin a life. It isn't just something that's been sat in a drawer somewhere. Um, and I, I love that to me. Somebody bought this and used it. It's a, It's got a direct connection to me to the past because it was used. It isn't a museum piece. All my cars are the same. All my cars have got dents. <laughs> you know, they they got a story. Um, and this is no different. I would much rather buy a car with 100,000 miles than one with five miles because the one with five miles hasn't gone wrong at all yet. Same with one of these items. Um, like I say, there's some deterioration, but so be it. This would have been... I've seen others that were significantly whiter than this, so it has bleached. I don't care. It's lovely. Um, very early proper plastic plastic rather than Bakelite. This is definitely plastic. Um, lovely metal catches that disengage positively. And then you... Yeah. So before we get into this, um, just very quickly, this was a, a present um, for Christmas and... I was over the moon with it when I got it, and every single time I actually spend any time having any tactile contact with this thing, I enjoy it all the more, because you can just feel how well things were made back then. Um, here we go. A Swiss made, ostensibly. I don't know how true that is. don't know if it's Swiss components. Obviously, nowadays, a lot of made-in-UK things are actually made elsewhere and, and uh, assembled here. And I don't know how far back that market in practice goes. So it's entirely possible that this is assembled in the UK from Swiss components. But nonetheless, they're telling this story and they're sticking to it. Swiss made. Slip the case off. You'll notice a gap. I'll get to that in a moment. And there it is. And I would imagine these matched. This has obviously been in the case. And the case has taken the brunt of the UV damage. Before we get to that, the little things. These fittings would have meant that you could hang this on your bathroom wall. So that you could just drop your shaver in when you're finished using it. Lovely little detail. I particularly like the way they've scalloped out that section there to take the slightly bulbous profile of this. And again, we've got the emblem repeated there. Pifco Prince. Now, this has a... A series of interesting doodads and doohickeys. Um, so first things first, we've got the option to switch 
from 220 to 110, which is something I've not commonly seen on products of this period, which again, that screams to me that it may well have been made in Switzerland for the European market. That's a bit gummy. It, I would imagine it was put to 220 and left there when it was brand new. Um, but the fact that you've got the option to switch between 220 and 110 really makes you think that it probably was made in Switzerland by a Swiss, maybe a Swiss company had a similar crest and Pifco made a, made a Pifco crest that matched so that they didn't have to change any of the molding perhaps. Um, blind studs this side and then, oh, a very old fashioned fitting on this side. Uh, that would be considered tamper-proof nowadays, but that was actually a fairly common type of screw head. It looks to be, on this... Yeah, actually, on this, it looks to just be two collets. So maybe it was kind of pressed together when it was built. Um, it just, again, it's very heavy, and I like that. To me, heavy is well-built in a lot of capacities. Um, no box, no instruction manual, don't really need it, it's quite self-explanatory, but even the, the profile, like, it feels nice to use. Um, I could imagine using something like this every day. I don't, I, I have used this, actually, but, um, my scruffy beard is beneath this. <laughs> Uh, the guard on the top, it's very old-fashioned. I don't know how many of you out there, unless you're watching this because you were looking up, remember that shaver I used to have. This guard, they don't really do this much anymore. Um, I don't know why. Just a change in design. Maybe they found a new way of doing things. But what I really love is that all of this comes apart for cleaning in a really nice, positive way. It's going to be gammy, by the way. I should just let you know. <laughs> This is a 60-year-old personal hygiene item. It was never going to be mint unless you bought one that was immaculate out of the box. And again, that doesn't appeal to me because it's part of its story. It was used. Somebody found this useful. And, and what more could you want from a piece of homeware than something that's been well-loved and well-used? Because it was good at its job. It was good enough at its job to get dirty. That's the, the razor head there. Still singing sharp um there's also this long hair trimmer which i hadn't actually paid much attention to until just now when i was trying to work out how to get it up out of the housing um there we go that's all back together and then you need a fingernail for this bear with i haven't got any fingernails i compulsively bite my fingernails Let's see if we can operate this. This is going to be something of a clunky channel, I feel, because I'm a clumsy person. Ah, hang on. Do you push that in to release it? I'm having a time. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. Never mind. There's a long hair trimmer there as well, I presume, for sideburns. I would imagine it runs off of the same motor drive as the razor head. That would be probably length, I'd imagine. We'll know more when we plug it in, and we are going to plug it in. Please focus. Come along. Let's let's not. Thank you. Um, yeah, this particular one feels a little bit stiff, but I get the feeling that's because it's well used, and then it's sat for a long time. But this does move. I've just moved it to six. And it does seem that it directly raises and lowers that razor head in there. Um, I would imagine, I would imagine if it's a six, it would lower it to allow more hair through the grid, and it would cut lower, perhaps. And then one I have to be a little, little rough, not too much, just just a little rough. There we go, yeah, because the razor head's right up against the grill now. So yeah, a shorter cut is denoted by a lower number, the same as normal hair trimmers. So yeah, there we go. Um, I'm very interested about this. I've never really paid any attention to that. Does that take that out, I wonder? 
I don't know. I'm not going to break it finding out. I don't want to break it. It's fine. Even the power cord, which is what that gap was earlier, comes with this really nice bit of clear plastic. Obviously, plastic was a big deal in the 50s. So where now we see plastic as a mark of cheapness, back then they would quite often see plastic as newfangled. <laughs> so that slips undone like that. This is heavily corroded, um, but it is the original one. There's a PIFCO emblem again. Well, PIFCO signage, both sides, no doubt, just in case you're in any doubt as to what you were plugging in. And this, I've got to say, this power cord feels great from a quality perspective. It's rubbery and it's still supple. It doesn't feel brittle at all, like you get with some some wiring and some appliances. A good amount of cord as well. Um, so, yeah, standard shaver. Uh, people would probably have had one of these installed at some point. Because, um, again, it was a newer a newer thing. Um, seems to be like a semi-directional plug. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, the directionality of this plug seems to be more of a suggestion <laughs> than an instruction at this stage. The nubs are worn off. I get the feeling this thing's probably been plugged in backwards more times than I care to remember, but at the end of the day, it just vibrates. So, um yeah hmm i don't know you know i think yeah i think it is more of a suggestion than anything it probably isn't polarized in all fairness i'm not going to force it whichever way around this plug goes in easiest is the one that the previous owner plugged it in the most so we'll go with that but i can't imagine anybody really gave much of a hoot don't swear kyle Oh, on the back. Sorry, missed this. Uh, that says 110, 220 volts, 50 cycles AC only. Careful. Uh, extra TIFO number 10. I don't know what that means. We've got a lethal adapter. Let's give it a try. Just plug it in any which way. And away we go. Bear with. I'm just going to hook this up. Oh. Oh, we're away. Now, I don't know how well you can see me. Uh, let's... I have no idea if that's done anything. Don't drop it. Oh no, there we go. Yeah. Apologies for the camera work. I've definitely done some damage to my beard. Okay, that's uh, loud. Very loud. Right. <laughs> um, again, I did what I always do and was ill-prepared for the video. So I <laughs> didn't realise how long my beard had gone. Not beard, but stubble. <laughs> Obviously, this is designed for someone who's pretty well kept. Well, kempt. I don't know. Is it kempt or kept? Answers in the comments. Um... The long hair trimmer probably would have been a shout, in all fairness. But I definitely felt it pulling on hairs. So, again, I think this is going to be another one of those things where I do an actual video just on using it. That was a bit of an improvised, let's just see what happens. And uh, apparently something happened, but I don't know how effective it was. What number did I have it set to? Oh, I had it set to a four, so it wasn't even trying, really. Um, I would imagine this was designed to give a real clean shave as far as this kind of thing goes. Um, I must look up if this has got a battery. I don't think it does. Going on the weight and the switchable voltage, I would say there's probably a transformer in here and it was just designed to be plugged in all the time whenever you were using it. But you never know. Anyway, another little... Look into another beautiful piece of mid-century technology. For me, anyway. I think this is just the sweetest thing. It's, it's just lovely. I just wish we still made things like this, you know? Very cool. Anyway, I've been Kyle. This has been my retro tat. And um, thank you very, very much for watching, if you have. And uh, again... Now that I've done two of these, I'm hoping to maybe 
the next one, do a uh, like a shootout about which thing you want to see next. So stay tuned for that if you plan on staying tuned at all. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.